Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining. Um, before we start, I just want to say a massive thanks to Vinco Sport for providing this in a safe manner so you can still see the drills. Um, session three is going to be all about pole vault drills that you guys can do at home um, and hopefully they can transfer across when you get back to being able to pole vault in your training centre. Now today we're going to focus on four bits of the vault which are really really important and that's the approach run, the, the plant, the takeoff and the on pole work. And we've got three or four drills for each one of those. Um, the equipment you're going to need today, I've got it here, is I've, I'm quite lucky. I've got cut up bits of poles at home. So you need anything that resembles this really. So a broom, um, a mop, anything really that, that you can use. And also, if possible, another one with, I've chosen a tin of beans and taped it to the end of the pole. So when we're doing some of the drills, it just gives it a little bit more weight. So it feels more like... A pole that you're working with. You're also going to need um, a little helper. So I've got my husband here helping me, but a parent, a sibling, for a few of these exercises just to help out. Um, the two really important things about this session is space. As you can see, I'm doing it outside today rather than in my lounge because we need a little bit more space because some of the drills are a little bit more hectic and a little bit of running involved. But also what's really important is visualization. Now, I do a lot of this anyway, but it's especially important right now because we're not able to pole vault. So these drills, when you're going through them, really think about where you would feel in the jump. So for example, if I'm focusing on the plant, I'm thinking, okay, when I'm vaulting, when I'm normally training, how does this cross over? And hopefully that'll help the crossover much easier. Don't worry, this session is gonna be recorded as well. So if you miss anything, um, you can have access to that and go back and see what Scott said or what I did. Um, yeah, so let's start over to you, Scott. Great, thanks, Hall. Uh, morning, everybody. Uh, just firstly, before we get going, a quick apology for me for being a week late. Uh, Holly had to delay this, and it was um, completely on my behalf uh, a week ago today. Uh, uh, my my partner, my wife Sally, was in uh, in labour, and we gave birth to a little baby son. So uh, I had to cancel on Holly, which was uh, unfortunate for her, but great for us. So apologies. Anyway, let's make a start. We are going to start with a block of drills, looking at the approach run and the pole lower. There's three in this section that we're going to look at. And for this, you're going to need your weighted pole. So your, your broomstick or your mop handle with a bit of weight attached to the end of it. Exercise number one is going to be dribbles with pole lowering. So Holly's going to pick the pole up with the weight away from her. She's going to dribble and just rehearse bringing the pole down to the parallel with her hands. Okay, she's going to turn around and do it on the way back. So poles up, lowering it down, popping it back up, lowering it down and popping it back up. Perfect. The key things are, guys, with your hands is, is don't let your front hand drop too low. You want to keep your front hand in line with your sternum. And then the back hand just acts as a bit of a counterbalance. So it just drops back away from the hip just a little bit. But you don't want to let that front hand get too far away from you. That's perfect. Exactly. And while you're doing that, uh, make sure your dribbles have really good form as well. Don't be sloppy with your dribbling. You've got to make sure you keep your toes pulled up really crisp on the ground. Okay. All right. Next drill, we're going to do a walking approach run with the pole. So Holly is going to do a 16 step approach run. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six. Boom. Perfect. Go back to the, go back to the other side again, Holly, and do it that way because they can see your hand when you're planting then. Now it's it's important to remember, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk through this again. There's a hold 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 on a second. Hold on a second. Um, so there's a couple of things we need to remember with Holly. She uses a two-step walk-on. So she does two little steps at the beginning and then starts her 16-step approach run. And her run structure that Holly uses from full approach is a 10-6 rhythm. So we're gonna have a look at that this time. Let's go. So two steps walk on and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight, nine, 10, one, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. So you can see uh, a couple of things that Hull did there really nicely. She increased the frequency of her steps in the last six strides, which was really imitating what she's trying to do on the approach run. So she's running strong for the first 10 steps and then running with really good foot speed in the last six steps. And during that whole time, she's got great posture, great form, and she's lowering the pole down to parallel before she plants the pole. 
Now, uh, we're going to progress that on now from a walking uh, approach run with pole to a dribble approach run with pole. So Hol's going to do two steps walking and then dribble 16 steps. Here we go. Awesome. Loved it. Okay. I wanted to stay quiet while she did it, but I'm going to ask her to do it one more time. And then I'm going to again narrate uh, her step count while she's doing it. So we've got a two step walk for Holly, because this is what she does. Then 10 steps of strong running and then six steps of fast running. Four, five, six, eight, 10, one, two, three, one, two, three. Boom. Perfect. Hard to count every step when you're doing it so fast. So counting every other step in that first block is probably the way to go. Anyway, that's our first block of drills on approach run and pole lowers. Over to you, Hall. So um, the really important things for me on the approach run and the pole lower um, is run structure. And I've worked on this for the last six years, I think. And it's for me, the count is 10 and six. And this really helps me. 10 strong running, six fast into the box and that gives the run a real purpose and I think what's really important as well in the, the approach run is speed in the last six to four steps that's where you want to hit the pole speed as fast as you can fast as you can Sorry awesome no worries great messaging um okay the next section of drills that we're going to do is focusing more on the plant okay so we're going to do four drills in this section looking at the planting of the pole the first one's pretty simple. Most people have done it, but get your weighted pole again. And we're just going to do some standing plants. So Hol's going to stand still, feet together, pick the pole up vertical, and then she's going to lower the pole, stretch and reach. Okay. Again, that front hand's not getting too far away from her. She's keeping it close to her body. But then the key thing is that right arm, watch what that right arm's doing. It turns and then it punches really tall and really straight, reaching as high as she can with that right arm. Do one more. And it also, you can see when she's up there, her arm blocks her ear. You can't see her ear. And that's really important. You don't want that arm too far forwards. You don't want it too far backwards. It blocks the ear out of shot. Okay. Next drill, Hull's gonna change poles. She's gonna use the non-weighted pole this time. So she, you can lose the tin of beans, get your, other, get your other mop handle or get your other broomstick handle with no weight on it, okay? The next drill we're gonna do is walking plants. We're gonna do this from four steps, okay guys? We're gonna do a four step walking plant and we're gonna do it with halts to start with. So you work on key positions. So Hull's gonna start with feet together, right foot back, and then we're gonna go four steps. So step one, pole drop. Step two, lift to the armpit. Step three, head. Step four, take off. Boom. Absolutely on the money. Let's watch it again. I'll talk you through those key positions. So right foot back and then we go step one, pole drop. Step two, armpit. Step three, head. Step four, stretch and reach. Perfect. HB, can you just do one more of those? Give me a big knee through that takeoff on this one. Okay. So drop the pole, armpit, head, and then stretch and reach, punch the knee. Awesome. And when I'm giving those cues, guys, of where, where I want you to be, it's all about where the right hand is. The right hand comes to the armpit. The right hand comes to the forehead. The right hand punches up tall. Okay? Right. We're going to do that same drill now, but we're going to progress it a little bit because rather than halting in each of those positions, once you've mastered where the pole needs to be, it needs to be done continuously. So here we go. Four steps, continuous plants, walking. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Really nice. So again, hitting those key positions, if you freeze framed the video, she'd still be hitting the same positions, but it's continuous. Drop, armpit, head, stretch. Really nice. And this is the key. You want it to be flowing. You don't want it to be jerky and stopping. It's got to be a fluid movement. Drop, armpit, head, stretch. Nice and flowing. Perfect hole. Okay. And then the last one in this section for planting is going to be running plants. So again, we're going to do this from four steps to start with, just because that's where the plant's happening. So she's going to do a four step running plant. So she steps back on her right foot. One, two, three, four. Nice. Good. HB, do that again. Go a little bit earlier with your hands, a little bit earlier with your hands. Okay. And drop two, three, four. Nice. Yeah, better. Really good. Just do one more so we can see it one more time. So pole tip up to start with, and then we're dropping the pole. One, two, three, stretch. Really good. Okay, so there's our running four-step plants. That's it for this section. Hull, any comments? Um, yeah, it's just kind of like what Scott said. Um, for the plant, for me, what's really important is the uh, your top arm, how straight it is. It needs to be straight because that basically means you're really, really tall, and that just means you can grip higher. So for me, top arm as straight as you can at takeoff at plant. 
really good. Okay, uh, guys, I assume one of the questions around this might end up being how many reps and sets and so on and so forth do we do of each of these? I mean, for me, you, you can overdo it, but I would say somewhere between five and 10 reps of these exercises uh, or break it up and do kind of two sets of five or two sets of four or whatever, and then just go through them like a little sequence, probably a couple of times a week. Um, but yeah, pick and choose from the menu and, and, and drop things in and out as you need to. All right. Let's move on to the next section. We're going to look at takeoff drills. Okay, so this is thinking about how the athlete uh, is jumping off of the ground and transferring their speed into the pole. So we're going to do a, a few drills for takeoff. The first one is going to be called skipping with pushes. So you need your unweighted pole. You have it on top of your head, and then you're going to do a skipping rhythm. And every time your left foot goes down, you're going to punch your hands up into the air. Okay, Hall. Awesome. Okay. Holes can only do a few reps because it fits in the camera, but obviously as you, if you've got space at home, you can really start to do this more dynamically. But the feeling is as the left foot punches down, the right hand punches up, which is what we're trying to create through the takeoff. If you want to start getting really technical guys, make sure that that left foot when it goes down is a flat footed contact. You don't want to be on your toe. You want to be on a flat foot at the same time you're punching your right hand up into the air. HB, can we do one more? One more set. You can do these for much more reps as well. Holes only doing three. Flat foot, hand up, flat foot, hand up. So we're trying to make a connection between the left foot and the right hand. Um, but yeah, you can do a set of kind of eight maybe of those if you wanted to across the garden or in the park, whatever. Okay, next exercise. You don't need a pole for this. We are going to do a two-step takeoff drill where we're working on our rhythm of the last two steps. Holly's going to do this from a rolling start, though, because it enables you to feel the last two steps far, far better. So she's going to dribble and then do two steps. Okay, she's going to dribble and then do a two-step drill. Great. Okay, so we can see that what she's trying to do with these last two steps is the, the, the second to last step or the penultimate step here. She's floating it just a little bit and then being really active with her left foot, her takeoff contact. So she's preparing that left foot during the penultimate. She's bringing the left foot through early and then she's striking down with the left foot, really getting it underneath her and popping up off the ground. Really good. I'm happy with that, HB. I think we've got some nice demos there. That was great. So we're really looking for a ba-boom rhythm in the last two steps once you've dribbled on. We're going to repeat that, guys, but we're going to do it with a weighted pole this time. But what we need you to do is turn the pole around from the way that you had it before so that the weight now is above your right hand. Okay, it'll just give you better feeling for this drill. Start with it up on, to, uh, on your shoulder or up on top of your head, whatever's comfortable. Okay, and then we're going to dribble and then two-step drill. Nice. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> Again, look at the way she floats the penultimate, gives herself time in the air a little bit to get that takeoff leg through, and then she strikes down with the takeoff leg right underneath her. One more HB, nice. We're trying to punch that right hand up as early as we can into the air, so that we're getting early hands. Boom, awesome. Great improvement there as well from Hull. Even at, even at 27, 28, she's still not mastered everything. She's not quite there. <laughs> All right. Uh, next drill. You're going to need your partner for this one, guys. So, so bring in uh, mum, dad, uh, si sibling, what, uh, whatever. Bring somebody in to help you. And you're going to get your piece of pole with, with no resistance or no weight on it because your partner's going to provide the resistance. And this is called one step planting with resistance. Boom. Okay. Nice. Oh, yeah. Paul, we're going to make a pole vault coach out of you yet. Okay, so one step, stretch. Okay, partner's just providing a little bit of resistance so Holly can feel that stretch at takeoff. That was really nice. Really, really good. God, I miss coaching pole vault. Um, uh, yeah, so that's the four drills for the takeoff. Okay, the last one there was that one step uh, planting with partner resistance. Hull, over to you. Um, the only thing I'd say about the takeoff is kind of similar to the plan is make sure postures are really good, your your upper body is really tall, arms are really tall, and then also you're not just running into the takeoff, you've got to run and jump into the takeoff, and that's why some of those drills that we've put at the front of those are to do with like setting it up and setting the takeoff up so you're jumping up and into the pole. Awesome, sounds great. 
Okay, last section of drills. We're going to be doing some work for the on-pole work. Um, and there's a few in this section, so uh, hopefully these are useful to you guys. The first one, you're going to need a piece of equipment that you can throw. Holly's got a med ball at home, but guys, get creative. Use a, a football, a basketball, put something um, with a bit of weight behind it in like a backpack or something, but just get creative, okay, and get a little bit of load. Holly's med, med ball, I think, weighs three kilos, so it doesn't need to be super heavy. Now, we're going to do a two-step walk. And as she's doing it, she's stretching and then popping the pole across to her partner. Partner's going to return the ball. So from here, two steps walking, hands up, stretch, and then she's popping. And it's really important, guys. You can see what she's starting to do is as she catches the ball and pulls it, she pushes her shoulders back. You can see that intention to push her shoulders back and let her hips come underneath. One more hole. So take off, stretch, and then pop. And she's not really closing the shoulders down. We don't want to close the shoulder angle too much. That's not what we want. What we want to see is that the hips are swinging up towards the shoulders. Okay, awesome. So that's our two-step stretch and pull. Now, next drill. You're going to need, um, Holly's got a bench here, which is handy, but you don't need a bench. You can do this on the sofa. You can do it on the end of the bed. Um, you know, just again, get creative. You're going to need your partner for this as well. And you're going to still need your little weighted object. This is called um, supine pops, but it basically means lying on your back, Paul's going to drop the ball into Holly's hand. She's going to catch it and pop it. That's perfect. It needs to go vertical, not horizontal, because we don't want to close the shoulder angle too much. It's just getting that stretch reflex going. Stretch through the shoulders, catch and pop. One more. Stretch, bang, and we hit it. That's perfect. Really good drill. But again, don't close the shoulders too much. You just want to get that little reflex of stretch and catch and realign the shoulders with the trunk. Awesome. So that was supine pops. Uh, third exercise for on-pole work, we're going to do roll-ups with a pole. So you saw Holly doing this as an uh, abdominal exercise the other day in terms of conditioning. Um, uh, so we're going to add in this time the pole. So it becomes a little bit more specific. Really nice variation here. So she's sitting up. She's rolling up into that invert position and orientating her arms like she wants to be on the pole. So the right arm stays straight, right arm's always straight, but the left arm starts to collapse in and fold to meet the pole so that she can get super tight to the pole. So take those ab exercises that we did a couple of weeks ago and then add in a piece of pole and try and start to visualize, like Holly said, what that's gonna feel like in the jump. All right, another really important one now for visualization is our standing full actions. So obviously when you do this on the pole, you're gonna be inverted. We can't really do that uh, in the garden. So Holt's gonna do it standing up, but you've got to imagine that everything now is happening in reverse. Boom, so that's the sequence of movement that she's doing on the pole. Awesome, Hull, can you turn to face the side now and do it sideways on? Yeah, face that way, that's perfect. Do a little bit more uh, fold in your hips as you, as you lean forwards. There we go, there you go. Boom, perfect, really nice. So we're going to see stretch through the takeoff, fold, align with the pole, turn and push out the top of the pole. Do one more because it's so good. I enjoyed it that much. Stretch, align with the pole, turn and push. Awesome. Guys, loads of reps of that and really start to work on your visualization. Try and see the vault, how it's happening when you're doing that exercise. All right. And then last one, we're going to take the last little bit of what Holly did there in her full actions. And we're going to do it now. This is an exercise called pole dropbacks. You need your partner to help you here. They're going to provide a bit of resistance. And Holly's going to complete the action that she's going to be doing through the top part of the jump. Okay, we're going to do a few reps of this so I can talk through it. So she's leaning forward as if she swung to cover on the pole, dropping back, getting tight, pull, push out the top of the pole. Lots of pressure in Holly's right hand. The right hand is driving and leading on the jump. Awesome. Nice. Okay, that'll do. I think we got it. But yeah, really, really nice shapes, really nice lines. Holly, can't wait to be back vaulting with you soon. I'm going to shut up now and pass back to you to wrap it up. Good job. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. I hope the three sessions we've done have been educational and helpful. And um, some of these exercises are actually super fun, like that last one, especially. Like, I could do that all day. And like I said, when, I, when you're doing that one, I could actually feel where I would be in the jump if I was actually jumping. So, yeah, just if you have any questions about any of these exercises, um, feel free to drop me a message and I can ask Scott or, you know, I could just answer them. And yeah, just thank you so much for joining and enjoying. I hope you're all staying safe and back vaulting as soon as possible.